This is Twit. There's a term out of AI research, which is a centaur, which is when you have human AI collaboration, like a chess robot and a chess player playing together to do things that neither of them could do on their own. But there's also this this uh, sort of out of labor economics, there's this term, the reverse centaur, which is when the body is the inconvenient meat puppet for the AI. Uh, and Amazon are kind of the masters of that. I'm going to paste a link into the chat of uh, a thing I wrote about reverse centaurs and Amazon. So that would be things like their drivers uh, being subjected to kind of uh, like superhuman conditions or superhuman constraints uh, by the um, uh, mm -hmm. by the uh, AIs that are monitoring them in the cars or packers being driven to do um, uh, unrealistic working uh, tempos in their warehouses and and Amazon leads the country in warehouse injuries yeah. uh, and the more automated an Amazon warehouse is the more injuries people incur I, I'll, I'll stipulate that like automation is a thing and robots are are cool and that uh, Amazon has every motive in the world to try to make good robots but I also want to sound the note of caution that a lot of what Amazon has booked to its shareholders as profits in automation have really been ways to get people to work in at an unsafe tempo in ways that put themselves at risk and in the case of their drivers put other people at risk other users of the road at risk i know a kid who works at whole foods owned by amazon uh and it's a very different experience sometimes some hours he's working for whole foods some hours he's working for amazon and the as the minute he's on the clock for amazon there are very clear almost unachievable metrics for his performance and they're made very clear and uh it is a very different experience it's kind of you, you nailed it it's uh you are you are at the mercy of the machine yeah and i need to state that i'm not celebrating this stuff but when we look at the no don't downplay it though i think you're yeah, right sure. alex don't downplay it. i think we and I think we've this seen this very very powerful technology i agree we've seen and, this with the explosion thanks to stable diffusion right. and dolly two and Mid journey. I mean, just explosion in AI art. Do you think, though? I'm, you know, initially, my initial reaction was this is like a Cambrian explosion. Like suddenly, this has taken off, and we've reached the hockey stick with AI in some interesting way. And now, more and more, I'm thinking it's a parlor trick that the the AI is just. It's not really AI. Almost, it's just combining images together in an interesting. Wait, nah, what's your take nah. on it, Alex? I, I have you tried Dolly before? Yeah, no, it's very impressive and stable yeah. diffusion and mid journey. Yeah, they're very stable they're, diffusion they're seems to be the fastest moving because it's open source. People can run it on their own servers, and there are a lot of people who've adopted it. I follow the stable diffusion uh, Reddit subreddit, and uh, it's pretty amazing yeah. what what they're doing. And yet, the, <laughs> I'm not I, I, I'm not convinced. It's it, I don't know. Is it AI? Is it true AI? Of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and the images are going to be as creative as, you know, the prompts that you're going right. to give them. I don't think we've had anything like this to, you know, in our history before. And, you know, there's, there's so many interesting applications. Here's one. Um, I think that, so uh, anyone who's worked uh, with a marketing department, you know, knows that it's always a struggle to communicate to the creative department, what you need them to, to create or what you'd like them to create because words are imprecise in art, you know, pictures are worth a thousand words. So you can't just be like, I need a picture of this and, and they'll know exactly what you're doing. Actually that, you know, um, graphic designer to product manager or marketing manager is one of the most difficult pieces of communication, I think in the business world. And I've been there and it's tough. Yeah. Um, and there are ways you get around it, make this more prominent, or we're trying to get this message across. We have a creative brief. Now I think what this stuff is, the amateurs can make a version of the image, you know, with something like Dolly and then pass it to the professionals. And then are, you know, be able or to vice versa. Oh, Both these, these systems yeah, seem to really right. work well with a yes. sketch. For here's an right. example of using old yes. cartoons as in it images. As Fred Flintstone turned into <laughs> this is so start with a, if it's you give these a starting point, it is kind of um, here's Inspector right. Gadget. Like, you know, I mean, I don't know. I I continue to be blown away every time I do you know one of these searches. And I mean, Leo, it's sort of it kind of shows you how much advances we've made. I mean, how serious of advance uh, of advances we've made. If you're, if you're sitting there and typing in a sentence prompt, you know, on your browser, and the next thing you know, a machine will draw it for you. Yeah. And you're like, meh, you know, like think about how far we've come. 
you know, if that's your reaction, yeah. it, the, this stuff becomes unremarkable once it works because we expect it. And I think that's the place we are today with these programs. Look at this uh, progression from what is essentially a stick figure as uh, this is waifu and stable diffusion combined together as it creates a more and more realistic with a little human help there. So it is a that, human partnership, I guess, that, that makes us. The funniest different. thing I saw on Reddit last week, I just pasted the URL for it into the chat, is was a um, a Drake meme whose uh, title is What Makes You a Human? And the the pushing things away is uh, to love and care about others. And the, the yes, that's right, is the selecting all images with bikes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah. That's good. And, uh, talking about CAPTCHA. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean... I, I agree that that this is a, a very powerful technology. It's it's super interesting to work with. Um, you know, I've also been where you are trying to find art uh, to use as reference to give to an illustrator. Being able to describe art is really great. I mean, Google Image Search was was a huge um, uh, phase change for that as That's well. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I I uh, I was an Imagineer for a while. And in the Imagineering archive, there's a room, or I don't even know if it's still there, but there's a room with bankers boxes filled with magazine clippings of illustrations yeah. uh, organized mm. by theme. Interesting. And if you had to draw a water fountain, they just had a box of clipped out illustrations of water fountains and oh. you would ring down to archives and they would send up a box of reference for you. Yeah. You know, so they're, they, they, you're, this, this is definitely something that is making the lives of illustrators easier, making it easier for people who aren't illustrators to talk to people who are and say, that's what I mean when I say water fountain, this picture here is the the kind of water fountain. I mean, not this picture over here. And and certainly like Dolly and, and all the other ones um, help there as well. But I will say that I don't see a path from statistical inference and, uh, you know, uh, deep learning networks to GAI. I, I, I think that to say that if oh, that's we do it, yeah. enough statistical inference, we get GAI is like saying if we breed these horses carefully enough, we'll have a locomotive. Right. Right. Gen you're talking about doing general uh, artificial wisdom. intelligence, human style intelligence. Yeah. But is there anybody actually arguing that, Corey? Oh yeah, tons. Oh yeah, that's really? the whole argument, right? The whole argument that um, mm -hmm. uh, well, the whole like Nick Bostrom, Elon Musk. Uh, Skynet is coming out of our AI. I have looked at open AI and what it can do. And now I'm afraid mm. for the, for the human race. They're, they're basically saying we are going to selectively breed this horse long enough that eventually we're going to have a locomotive and then it's going to kill us all. And it, it is like such, um, obvious nonsense to me that I'm quite baffled by it. Uh, and, so and, you know, what is the discontinuity? So it's obviously horses and locomotives clear. But so, but this is about human cognition. cognition. Is there something about human cognition that is unreachable? In no, this no, no, no. It's just not. It's just not a. It, human cognition is not statistical inference. It, you know, we, it's we a don't different know exactly method entirely. It it's not. It's not. I mean, statistical statistical inference might be a component of it. It probably is. Uh, but the idea that that um, in, increasing uh, innovation in the realm of statistical inference eventually produces. Uh, human cognition is just it's it's wrong uh, and you know there's this there's this corollary which is uh, uh, the um, automation unemployment corollary right the the looming automation unemployment crisis which again I think is just like doesn't isn't right like it's it's foundations are wrong so like you look at the stories about uh, automation unemployment you see things like oh the most popular job in America is truck driver and driving trucks is something that we can do with ML because we can give them a dedicated lane on the highway and set them to following each other and basically invent a shitty train. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, the thing is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics category for truck driver incorporates anyone who operates a heavy goods vehicle. So it's not the most like 16 wheeler driver is not the most popular job in America. It is a sure. relatively small and unimportant part of our overall economy. Not that those people are unimportant, but like that, you know, if all of the truck drivers were unemployed tomorrow, the change in the unemployment figures would not be very large. Meanwhile, we're just not getting anywhere with the self-driving cars, right? Like the, the, there's so much smoke and mirrors and self-driving cars. The only ones that seem to perform at all are the ones that actually just have a human remotely driving the car, overseeing the car. And if those people's attention wanders, which it will inevitably, uh, then those cars become murder bots. 
Um, and, you know, it raises an important point, which is that we already have a lot of human intelligence, like we have 8 billion humans. Um, we don't have enough non-human intelligence, right? Like the, the uh, capacity to be vigilant for things that happens very rarely is, is not a capacity that humans mostly have. A, a few people may have it, but it's not a widespread trait in our population, which is why the TSA is really good at spotting uh, water bottles and really bad at spotting guns <laughs> because they never see a gun, right? But they see water bottles all day long. Like you cannot leave neurons trained to do a pattern recognition for a pattern that you never encounter because those neurons will be retrained to make you better at the pattern recognition that you do all day. Right. And so they just forget, like you can train them to spot guns on an x-ray, but then they'll forget not because they're lazy or whatever, but because they never see guns on an x-ray. They see water bottles all day long. That's interesting. So you're not, you're not, doesn't require a notion of a human soul or some sort of magical uh, capability that cognition, yeah. human no, cognition. Look, also, I just don't also think the, the, it is. Yeah. The conversations that, I think there are conversations that really occur on the fringes about this stuff leading to general intelligence. And I, I think that, that um, you know, the mainstream conversation about this stuff looks at it rationally and says, there's a lot of stuff that we can do, humans and artificial intelligence combined. And so I think during that, the you lockdown, know, is, sorry, go ahead. I beg your pardon. Go ahead. No, 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 you finish. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Yeah, I apologize because the latency in the in the Skype is is killing us as usual. Not Skype, Zoom. Uh, go ahead, Corey. I was just going to say during the lockdown, the World Economic Forum asked me to give them a talk on technological unemployment, and when I sent them the text of the talk, they withdrew the invitation, so I turned it into a column, uh, and it's the it just put it in the URL there. You, but you weren't saying uh, what they wanted you to say, Corey. But basically, I said like I don't think we're going to have. AI driven unemployment, because even if we automate some stuff, like we're going to have to, you know, relocate every city 20 kilometers inland over the next 300 years, that's full employment for everyone, no matter how many robots we build, there's just like more work than, than we can imagine. Uh, and they, they didn't like that at all. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Didn't fit their, uh, their model. But they, they really believe, and that's why I raise it. They really believe in technological unemployment, general AI breakthroughs on the immediate horizon. You know, they, they, they aren't fringe beliefs in the, in the, in the halls of power or in the halls of business or even in finance They they are accepted as gospel. You know, there are a few I mean, things like simply, general, I, I don't know. AI, there are a few things I, like I, general AI, hold on a second. Now. General AI, uh, fusion, quantum computing, uh, it seems prudent to perhaps consider their eventual invention even sure. if they're not necessarily around the corner uh go ahead alex i mean it's just not what i hear you know i mean maybe you think I'm it's gonna happen folks no i'm sorry I, I do will it happen eventually who knows um but this i i just don't agree with Corey about um you know this being an accepted thing um at least not in the conversations i hear you know, maybe the... Uh, oh, you're saying that people don't believe general AI no, is just around the corner. I, I don't think yeah. so. No, I think yeah. look at the response to what happened with this Google engineer who said that the chatbot was... Well, uh, Google didn't like it. Sent, you know, <laughs> Google fired him. Anyone who, who with any standing in the research community, Yeah, they all said that's right. Um, sure. You know, called Sentience. him an idiot. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and like, I don't know. I, I mean, Corey, maybe the, the, you know, the Thinkfluencer class likes to talk about this at their conferences. Um, but this idea that AGI is right around the corner, just to me, I've never heard that, um, you know, from credible folks in the industry. Sure. Well, I mean, I, science fiction writers certainly think it's nonsense, right? Like it is a recurring theme at science fiction conventions. Why are all these CEOs right. out there saying this is this, this is, is uh, it's, on yeah. the horizon? But they are saying well, I think it. this I think the CEOs aren't saying it. I think the CEOs are saying that it's very powerful technology. But I don't think they're saying we're going to be hand in hand with artificial gen general intelligence and, and that's what we're working toward i mean i mean you know investing in is, and, that, and wall street can believe it that's the hypothesis Who's, of the center for existential risk who are like you know have attracted like billions of dollars hundreds of millions of dollars in capital right i mean well aren't that. you already saying that we shouldn't equate money with smarts no it's true it's true right so there what i'm saying is that there it may be a small number of very rich people who believe this but mm -hmm. there are there are some very rich people who believe it and a bunch of weird stands for them who also believe right. it. I just think if you speak with people, credible folks in the industry, you know, folks who are actually doing the research, um, like Nick Bostrom, sure. I mean, I, I like the guy, he's a philosopher. 
He's not, right. he doesn't work in, in machine learning. Yep. And you speak with researchers, you speak with the tech companies, you know, they yeah, might yeah. use marketing terms to talk about the power of their artificial intelligence. Soon to our Pachai calling it, you know, as powerful as fire. You know, that sounds like marketing to me. Um, but I never hear him or anybody at Google talking about, you know, us reaching artificial general intelligence outside of one guy, you know, who actually right. has an interesting story to tell. And I did have him on, on my podcast. We had an interesting conversation. Um, that, that being said, um, you know, he's the, ex the extreme exception and not the rule.